that is also a tier, so as a family we're going to lose £8,000 if these cuts go ahead. That could bring us down to about £25,000 a year, which means that we would have to choose between paying our mortgage um, or paying the bills, essentially. That's what it could come to. Um, we'd have to make that choice each month. Do we eat? Do we have heating? Or do we have a home? We've had our son this year and it should have been the happiest year of our life. But because of everything that's been happening, it's also it's it, it's been the happiest year of my life and the worst year of my life at the same time. Hello, no! What do you want? Hello, yeah! What do you want? inspired by the, the Durham teaching assistants and the stand they're taking against their bosses, so much so that we took a motion to Bolton Trades Council uh, who agreed to fund a minibus of trade unionists across Bolton to come over and support them and just to say to them thank you for having the courage to come out because it really does take courage, especially when you're in a school. Each and every one of them have shown massive courage to come here. We're honoured to be here with them, to be honest. It is building all the time. Um, last time I think we had 80, this time we've had over 100 picket lines because people are thinking, oh yes, I can do it. People who were maybe scared before are thinking, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> I've been flying around uh, my area, sort of, so Shield and Bishop and spending with this morning, visiting where I could, make sure everyone's all right, checking in what the mood is, and it's very up, very upbeat, very determined. The passion is increasing, the determination is increasing, and the coming together is actually spreading, and I think that's the really good thing. It is spreading, and people are growing in confidence in what they're doing is actually right. We've got um, TAs from different schools in Bishop Auckland who live in Spennymoor and they've come down to join us. I think we've got about four different schools that have joined us this morning, which is absolutely brilliant. Our school's mostly closed, closed for nursery. Uh, it's open for the breakfast club and the after school club and the afternoon two year olds. We would like it closed entirely, but hey ho. Um, so we've come up to just show support. I know just a thank you for your support. Thank you. The support has been fabulous. So we actually wrote a letter thanking the parents for their support because we really do appreciate it. The parents are in full support of the teaching assistants and why wouldn't they be? The support that they give to the pupils, the school, as you say when they're on strike, the school can't function properly without the teaching assistants. There are so many things not going to happen today. All intervention groups and that's intervention for more able children, less able children. There's no support groups. We're down at least seven first aiders. There's no clubs for the children. Activities that children love, like swimming, are being cancelled. Um, so anything that needs that higher level of input has been scrapped. So yes, we're at school, more than not the children are usual education. And that's unfair to them, really, isn't it? I know a lot of head teachers are being encouraged to open. They're in an awful situation that they're trying to support us. <laughs> they value they value what we're doing, but at the same time they're having this huge pressure put on them to open regardless. Um, my son comes to St Charles School, um, and the teaching assistants there are absolutely fantastic. I can't believe what the county council are actually doing. Um, they deserve the pay and much more than what they get. Never mind being decreased in the wages. I've just brought them some pies from our shop. <laughs> keep them warm and keep them fed <laughs> on the picket line. <laughs> I think it's callous the way Durham County Council is trying to force these new contracts onto these people. They do a fantastic job and I just wish they were valued more. Would these Durham councillors take a 23% pay cut? I don't think so. So I'm going to do everything I can while I'm here. I'm here tonight and tomorrow. And I'm going to support them the best I can, whether that's delivering leaflets uh, or doing anything. The construction workers are widening their support out, which is important. Once again, I chose that the construction workers are prepared to get involved in disputes where people's having the terminal conditions cut, and it's massively important. You are a star. I'm going to cry. So what made you bring down the coffee? Uh, just, I support the campaign, I support everything. Durham County Council at school. 
pretty much. <laughs> the poison. Oh, thank you very much. You're all right. I don't know if there's enough Oh, there will be. We'll <laughs> share them. You're not getting any. <laughs> In you get. <laughs> because of the conditions that were coming up, um, mm. Tracy yeah. decided that she'd had enough financially from it. She didn't want to have to go through all this, did you? Yeah, but I she's just... supporting us. They are losing experienced members of staff, like myself, like all of us. We've yeah. been at the nursery. I've been at 17 years. 13. Margaret, Margaret yeah, how long have you been that. Yeah. Double that one. Yeah, 35 so years. Yeah. You are losing members of staff like us. You Experience are worth their weight in gold. Worth their weight in gold. I noticed the council uh, saying that we're not highly qualified, but we are. I've trained for eight and a half years in my job. Um, I worked with a child right through school who had autism. I did a year's course to gain a level three in autistic spectrum disorder to support him. I was told about the course by school, but I self-funded it myself. I think that was £450. Then I went on to do my foundation degree for two years part-time while I worked and then um, the top-up year at Sunderland um, for two years. Um, so I, I, then I, last year I gained a degree in education and curriculum studies, be honest. So we are highly qualified. Teachers don't necessarily have training in child psychology but teaching assistants do so they actually have more knowledge of the child's like, development than a teacher necessarily will. I have ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia and autism and when I was four year old having a teaching assistant basically meant I could go to school because before that I was being suspended on my second day of school for pushing a whiteboard over or something and then um, <laughs> But like, um, I have friends in the same position that haven't been able to like finish college and stuff because they haven't had anyone there to... Having a teaching assistant also means that you have someone there that can communicate your needs if you can't, so they can explain why you might not necessarily be able to do something that everyone else can do. And that's really important and it, it impacts later on in their life. For me it was wonderful because Lauren had an amazing one-to-one -one support through primary school and um, I think it early intervention um, and she got to secondary school then at sixth form she did a cash level three in childcare and education and then she went on to, to gain her degree and she graduated two days ago so it was such a proud day. Now I want to help other people that have been in the same situation as me and I like to want to help people with autism and stuff too. I only came back into being a teaching assistant four years ago. I was a lecturer prior to that, training teaching assistants and nursery nurses. And I'd been out of it for 15 years. And the change in the role, it was massive. An awful lot of my colleagues are super qualified, super experienced. You're going to get, you're going to get younger people accepting the jobs who are nowhere near as qualified. And, and what will happen? What will happen to the children? What will happen to the results? You know, things like that. It's going to have a major impact. I have a, a degree in, in education from uh, Durham University. Studied 17 years ago. Got a 2-1 from Durham. So I'm super qualified for what I do. I, I know I'm overqualified. But there was a... I made the decision to go into nursery because A, I like children, love children, love working with them. But equally I had a family and I wanted to be at home for my family. So the six weeks that we have off, I mean, we, it's, we do work within that time, obviously, but it meant I didn't need childminders, I didn't need to look, at, to look for anyone else to look after my children, I could do that myself. Um, so that was the trade-off. I've worked as a tier for 20 years. Um, I'm a single parent, uh, so obviously there's only my wage coming in. Um, I've got two children, one who's going to do GCSEs and one at the current primary school don't know how I'm going to manage, um, what I'm losing is my year's mortgage payment, um, it's a job I love, it's a job that I've wanted to do from being little and I don't know what else I could do, um, I can't really do any extra hours because of my children, um, I need to be at home, my son's only 14 so I can't really leave him on his own. After the first half term of starting my degree I became ill and I never recovered and I got diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome or ME. So I pretty much work and I don't have a work-life balance 
um, because I don't know if I can work these extra hours that the council are offering. I will try, but that will mean that the likelihood is I'll be spending all my spare time resting so that I can work. There is a cut back in terms of employing teachers and TAs. We've seen social care services being cut and schools are like sort of replacing some of those social care services like providing outreach services. So if you think about it, they have got money freed up from cutting staff which can then be used to provide other services and quite often on the cheap as well. You've got councillors who voted in favour of the teaching assistance cuts who are actually school governors on schools in this town. And I mean surely that's a conflict of interest in itself. There's a bit of a misconception that all TAs have been offered the extra hours to mitigate the 23% pay cut and actually that's not a given at all. Um, the council haven't been upfront about releasing how many head teachers have been able to offer those hours and you know if there are situations where TAs can't actually work those hours then they are lumped with that 23% pay cut. And the council keeps saying this is not a money saving exercise despite the fact that in one of the reports it quotes a saving of £4.7 million a year if this goes through. Apparently it's not about saving money. If it's not about saving money, that's great. That's great. Sort it out. We're not asking for more. We went on strike in Bolton in 1984 nursery nurses and we were on strike for seven months and we stuck it out and that's what these girls have got to do they've got to stand out and be treated as human beings and get the fair pay for the work they do i think we've put up a real fight and i think durham county council has picked the wrong people to fight with i certainly have we're a strong team they've got away with it in the past they have yeah i think the thought people would have just sat back and, and accepted it again yes yeah. again again not this time with more and more negative press from Down County Council. When we all come together it's brilliant but then obviously we go back to work and nothing changes so then we start to kind of feel a little bit devalued again and morale can get quite low. To be completely honest at school it's been very very difficult to work because of, of the atmosphere that this has created um, obviously you have to go to school you have to be professional every day and you do do your job and we do our job to the same standard but it's it's constantly preying on your mind every morning you're going to work you're thinking is there going to be another release from the council and um, you know is, is is there something going to happen and you're having to put on that smile every day when you work with the children but it's it's always on your mind constantly and, and, and has been for the past 13 14 months all of the time we're constantly refuting the untruths that are coming out and how our names are well they're trying to blacken it yeah. really as teaching assistants as our whole group and as our profession and, and it's a constant fight especially for us as a committee isn't it to to constantly refute what they're saying it's it's like a full-time job on top of a full-time job, but we still do it. Mm. Well, and we've got to do. We've got to do it because the council, in particular, the thing that that really boils people's blood is that they keep saying that um, we're, we're getting paid for more hours than we work and for more weeks that we actually work and they make it sound that we're trying to claim something fraudulently that we're not entitled to do it. What they don't say is what we're doing is just working to the contracts that, that we've had all the way through. 
we've always had these contracts and all we've done is work to those contacts and a lot more hours which they also don't mention. The council have continued to repeat that it was it's an equality issue um, and that it needs to be done um, but when we've asked about where the claims have been come from because they're talking about equality claims um, there hasn't been any. In the 70s uh, TAs used to claim uh, job seekers allowance in the holidays uh, so of course they wanted to put a stop to that so what they did was they said, well, uh, we'll pay you for the whole year, we'll just split your salary over 12 months, so you'll still get paid for the holidays, but you won't get any more pay, it was the same pay, okay. just spread over 12 months to stop them claiming job seekers allowance, or whatever it was called in the 70s. We haven't actually been allowed to see our contracts. Uh, Durham County Council have withheld them from us. The council talk about 2004 and about new contracts and that's when we started to get paid for more hours than we actually work. But we didn't get a pay rise in 2004. We might, they might have worded the contracts differently, but we didn't get a pay rise and we didn't get a cut in our hours. We just carried on with the same money that we've always got. Other areas, such as Darlington and Stockton and Cumbria, they went through this and they did it when they went through single status and they dealt with this issue then. They regraded their teaching assistance to a certain point where, yes, they went to term time, but their pay loss was mitigated because they were regraded at the right side of level. There's this argument where you can't regrade one group of employees. Um, and the, the advice that we've had is that actually the indication is that you can. Derby, I know recently have been given an offer and um, they, I think they call them their TAs, TA1s and TA2s. They're going to regrade their TA1s but not their TA2s. So it must be legal that you can regrade one group of employees. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that Derby are going to reject that because the majority of them are TA2s. The Labour Council have closed care homes, leisure centres, and they've done a lot of outsourcing uh, services, uh, you know, ostensibly to the community, but actually some of those services have already closed. It's always cuts to the lower earning people. We need, we need to start at the top with the high earning people. They need to cut their wages. If a government's going for you, um, then you defend your communities first and foremost, and that's what I think the Labour Party should be about. I think it's disgraceful that, uh, that the... That the Teaching assistants have got, to, have got to do this because of uh, what Labour Control Council has done. Uh, I, I just kind of believe it. Never thought it would come to this, but I'm full, fully behind them. Amongst ordinary Labour Party members, there's no support whatsoever. So they're they're in a really tricky position, I think, because. Um, you know, yes, they represent their communities, uh, which they're not doing, but also they represent the Labour Party, which they're not doing. <laughs> what they're telling them, they're saying that they had no option but to vote, and they did have an option. If they wanted to, they, they need, needn't have attended the meetings, you know what I mean, where they were, where they were voting for these things. Mm. Yeah, they'll have been, you know, under the whip, you know, sort of thing to, to vote, but... I think they say they, they, they needed to go there, you know. To quote Jeremy Corbyn, we'd like to get him back up here and, yeah. and help us to get it sorted. He said that's a very strong message from the um, Miners Gala, get it sorted. John McDonald said the same thing when he met us at the Liverpool um, conference and a Labour Council really ought to be listening to their Labour leaders to get it sorted. We'd love them to come back up and join us. In terms of kind of the, the democratic structures in the party, they don't, they, they can't tell Simon Henning, uh, you know, the deputy leader, they can't, they can't tell them what to do. So it is really difficult. I understand that they're in a, they're in a position. We, we would like them to take, like, to, to come up on the picket lines, obviously. I absolutely love Jeremy Corbyn's views and ideals, and I would love to see him come up and support us. He said back in, I think it was July at the Miners Gala, I stood and listened to him in awe, what he was saying, and I, I really thought he was behind us, but we've heard nothing, but I would give him a message. It's still not Oh, Jeremy, please come up. We are away! Jeremy What do we want? Fair pin!
people think that we're going to go away and that we're going to give up. And I'd like us to send them a really clear message. Are we going to give up? No! Are we going to go away? No! Are we going to see this through until they give us fair pay? Yeah! Do not let them bully you in school. You stand your ground. You've got any grievances, you pass them on. You are in the right. You are not wrong. You are being wronged. Right? You stand for each other. You stand up for what you believe in. And you fight this and we will win it. Keep on fighting. We'll be standing in our hundreds when we come.